Um, I'm very happy that I could uh, contribute to this uh, seminar. Uh, and I would like to introduce the theme of uh, the impact of the pandemic to street life and urban culture and beyond uh, by the case of the Netherlands, my own country. Um, we have seen an, uh, a growing number of people ho hospitalized per day, particularly in March and April of this year. Um, Percentage-wise, we could say that this is uh, compared to other countries in Europe, uh, yet it's um, more than in uh, Korea or China, and much less than certain states in the US and, for example, Brazil. Um, let me see, now it should move. Yes, quite some people uh, unfortunately passed away and follows roughly the same curve. The particular moment in uh, time, which was the most challenging one, was the end of March. Then the capacity of the hospitals was stressed, but foremost, the uncertainty among the population grew. What has uh, started in, uh, say, a southeastern part of the Netherlands, dotted in a circle, um, started to grew and spread all over the country. Oh, here, here you see the stress. It was spread all over the country. And then particularly, perhaps now we have some experience, it spread it in uh, the urban course of the country. So what we hear then saw is that there ha had to come a response from uh, public uh, government. There came first a call for public responsibility. People were asked to work at home, stay at a distance of 1.5 meters, say two arm lengths, and crowding was advised not to happen. So less than three people outside or inside was not advised, of course. This, we have seen it in other countries too. It was a call. There was no formal lockdown, unlike other countries in Europe. Yet what was happening is that public amenities and facilities were closed. So the closure of theaters, cinemas, sport facilities, restaurants and cafes, it all closed. And again, this is roughly seen elsewhere. Now, for the, case, for the sake of this intro, uh, I, within the Netherlands, I uh, zoom into the city of Rotterdam as an example of uh, the impact of the pandemic to street life and urban culture and beyond. So again, we didn't have a formal lockdown, unlike many countries in Europe. You have to understand this from ancient values in our society. We share with the globe the moral ethics and values of health. So health comes first. Whenever someone is in need, there is the ethical response to um, help them. This is nicely put forward by Erasmus from Rotterdam um, just before the Netherlands established, so already 500 years ago. It's an important humanist thinker and it still is present in our society. So whenever our prime minister, shown in the right upper right corner, called the population to stay at home, the ethical response was there and they stayed home. And whenever the mayor next to it uh, repeated the message in the own uh, um, sphere, uh, we saw another effect of this. But that we didn't have a formal lockdown was, you could understand this from our social ethics and value of the freedom of will. Being free without too strong top-down power. This is particularly in the Netherlands an important way of thinking. 
of course, this not always goes well. So the moral ethics and the social values conflict. So I want to introduce a kind of disclaimer that in the Netherlands it didn't go always as desired. Crowding and resistance is seen from time to time. In the early days we've seen it, parks were overcrowded, parties were organized, and modestly some resistance is taking place. And then the health sector introduces a public announcement really to stay at home. That's the, the labels put in the screen. Particularly today, we see a kind of reluctance towards all the calls and the, the, um, the, the desire to stay at home or keep a distance. It seems like people care less. Back to the early uh, period of the pandemics, late March. The immediate response was indeed stay home. There was a great uh, level of uncertainty, so people started to collect goods and hoard them inside their, their house. Outside in the city, although we were allowed to go outside as an individual or a family, it was in extremely abandoned. Here you see uh, some of the larger urban arteries in the city of Rotterdam. This is the image we have seen in Rotterdam, but also in other cities. And uh, as you have seen in previous uh, webinars, this is the image also in other cities around the globe. We can support this by Google Analytics. Travel reduced, people didn't go to workplaces. They didn't go that much to pharmacies or groceries. Uh, retail, recreation and park, those areas were abandoned. People stay indeed at home. From home or from the neighborhood, population uh, sent support to medical aid uh, by signage on the streets like this nice uh, uh, quote, together we are strong, or flaggings like we are there for you. And in the sense of the local government introduced uh, measurements for urban hygiene so sanitation was introduced uh, all over the uh, inner city of Rotterdam and major public anchor points. It also added to the creation of awareness. Everywhere in the, in the city, particularly in Rotterdam and other bigger cities, we see signs and symbols reminding people to stay on distance. This is the immediate response, a strong focus on social distance. But Ross showed and int uh, introduced a reduction of mobility, it's still there, but people started to travel, started particularly to go to parks. And again, today, I just got a pop-up news message that the beaches are crowded again. People, the freedom of will brings people back to their old patterns. They want to go to parks, they want to go to beaches, etc. So today the city of Rotterdam introduced uh, new measurements for the inner city. You have to wear a face mask uh, to, not so much for healthy reasons, more for uh, changing the social behavior amongst the people to stay indeed on distance. Um, this is not only in the inner city, but also on, in major cores, other cores of Rotterdam. Um, people became used to the situation and seek their way out. They might be bored from staying at home or they, feel, they search for a kind of summer break. So again, crowding takes place in the city, but the outcome at the moment, after just uh, 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 say a week of this uh, new warm crowding, is that the numbers of diagnosed people in Rotterdam is increasing, but mostly these are young people with a huge social network and then the hospitalization is less. So what we see in the Netherlands is that public spaces are 
um, especially in, in the, the urban cores, are populated again. So can we look beyond this? Can we look beyond the pandemics? That is in this discussion, I think, one of the interesting questions we ask ourselves. Can, do we see already in impacts on street life and urban culture in which we bring us to parts of time after pandemics, whenever that may be? Well, obviously, the point is this like what you see on the screen? Is this like the future? Shall we uh, find ourselves in public spaces in our own bubble? I like this example a lot then. Shall we introduce a furniture which keeps us on distance? Sign symbols again? That's questionable. What will be the effect on public space on the long term? The effect of street life, which we have seen in the Netherlands during the high days of pandemics, is that crowding is avoided and ro roads are blocked. But above all, space for people by foot increased. We have seen examples in New York, pushed forward by Seta Law in one of the previous seminars. This is like an embryotic sign which may have uh, which may take longer, uh, also uh, is present beyond pandemics. We also see the effect of urban culture. Streets are revitalizing already now, terraces are extended, pocket parks are discovered too as an alternative for the major city parks. This might be a way uh, to watch the future. In the city of Rotterdam, it catalyzed large-scale planned pedestrianization and greening of the city. Large arteries were already on the list of becoming largely pedestrianized. So this is the next level beyond, say, old-school examples of Copenhagen. Large arteries are greened. Cross points all over the city. And all those plans are now uh, uh, started. But this is embedded in a situation where the, uh, the economic downfall has started. So also in the Netherlands, we have seen that the vacancy rates of retail and offices increase and people modestly lose their jobs. It's their first signs. So what will this be? A dream in a city without uh, old school shops and office buildings? Well, I presume that this is part of an ongoing socio-economic uh, restructuring or maybe destructuring following trends which are already present in our cities for a decade. People, proactive citizens, appropriate streets. People more and more work at the home office and whenever we can we shop online it already is part of our city and this all together um, may support an expected increase of domestic and local life in public space which means that we appropriate the spaces near our houses because we work at house uh, we work at the home office, we shop online, it's all already in our direct proximity. And we also see perhaps local leisure. We don't travel that much. Planes are on the air force. And if you add to this the expected unemployment, people have less means, economic crisis which occurs, keep people uh, uh, limited in the possibilities they might seek their future nearby. So what are the design challenges we have in this the last slide um, in the times to come? Well, perhaps generic infrastructure, which is dominated by a kind of global city image, uh, lacks of local public spaces. So people living there may need uh, spaces which they could be called theirs, community spaces. High rise, which is omnipresent in Rotterdam, um, without a kind of sufficient public space on the street level or and in the interior, may be challenged because people don't have this uh, local public space and they might seek for it. 
particularly also in dense urban environments, dense neighborhoods with small dwellings and perhaps narrow few or little public spaces, people with a low income, which examples, we have seen examples all over the globe. Uh, you, it's not yet slumming, but it's like seeking for uh, urban spaces close by to engage community life. That's a challenge we have. And then lastly, uh, particularly in uh, uh, large cities in our, uh, on our planet, we have the newcomers. People flock from city to city, uh, they go from the hinterland to the city. Newcomers always are present. Do they, are they part of these local public spaces and what is theirs? Or people which are more reactive and less proactive? Do they also take part of this local public space or do they need another kind of public space? These, I think, are all um, questions which we could uh, ask ourselves in this seminar and particularly in the round table debate. We will see. I think particularly these uh, questions, uh, like other cases, uh, are challenging uh, our uh, um, uh, desire to create public spaces for domestic and local life and bring health and um, uh, free will together. So thank you. Um,